Hey Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization 6 as Scythia in the new player tutorial game. Right, we've got about five turns here before we can declare war on the Ottomans, so we're just going to mostly be uh, telling a lot of the units to sit still and hold tight. And rather than fortify them, I personally like to uh, personally tell them to be, you know, still. I think it works a little bit better. Uh, okay, so I got a builder in here. Let's do a chop chop in here. We want to improve this city if we can. I could put a campus here, actually, now that I look at things. Would also make a pretty reasonable spot for an industrial zone. Now that I say that, I really want to unlock industrial zones, but I really need cartography. Well, I guess I'm not in a super rush to get cartography, so I will go ahead and grab apprenticeship. It'll take me about three turns. There's another builder. Alrighty, so library has been completed over here in Pizirk. So again, moving forward, we would like to just uh, get this stuff. Let's go ahead and make sure that we are prioritizing production over anything else, although the city doesn't really have enough tiles to justify much else. And uh, we'll go ahead and tell them to get to work on a commercial hub to get us more gold and more trade routes that we can use on various different things. Let's go ahead and get the farms up over here and then get another builder. Builders are very important. All right, we have another valley right here. Let's go ahead and get that out. And yeah. Yep, 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 yep. More builders. Tell all these units to sit still individually. A space bar is a very handy hotkey. Also, uh, a hotkey I recommend is if you go up into your key bindings, there is the next action key here. I have it bound to Z or Z. This way I can hit Z and space bar really, really quickly without having to click down here to find the next unit that needs an action. And then I can just head, hit Z and spacebar to quickly cycle through any units who need orders. It's a very handy hotkey that I make use of quite a lot. We chop out this builder. I'm going to go ahead and improve this to give me more access to coffee. Not quite a workable tile yet, but we're getting there. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to avoid this. And I will prefer to put a commercial hub down, but I'll quickly grab another builder. So we're, get, we're basically getting a whole bunch of builders to be able to improve our empire's tiles so that we can be more efficient. Well, there's Fez hiding in the fog of war there. I have an envoy. I will be sending them to different places later. Alrighty. And so again, I can just kind of show you this uh, whole like cycling thing. Uh, I should have gone to that tile. It's not a big deal. I just press Z in spacebar and all my units will be told to be quiet and stop moving. Chop that one as well. Now we're going to lock that tile in and this tile. Start placing the farms in here to get this city well fed. Hang you out over here on the edge. Uh, and actually similarly, I'm going to send you up to there. And again, I like to, I prefer to tell my units to sit still rather than uh, fortify because I, I tend to forget about them. Ah, we have Hypathia, great scientist. She will actually instantly build a library. Do I have a campus that is unbuilt? No. We'll just go ahead and pop her in here. Uh, did I build a library in here? I did not. So actually, I'll get extra production value out of that. So I'm quite glad I stopped that. And we'll be trading with Akkad. Again, we're just looking for gold. I could probably get more gold if I put this trader in Pokrovka. I still have room for one more trader, I believe. No, no, no. Never mind. Uh, so looking at this city. And I have an, an analysis of this city. It looks like it could do with a couple more builders. More importantly, uh, we can start maybe getting another army going in the form of warriors to be upgraded into musketmen to be sent across the waves. Go ahead and do a farm there. Get over here to chop to place that stuff. And again, we just press Z in spacebar to tell all these units to stop. I can, of course, upgrade another courser. 
so that our army is a little bit bigger. The friendship runs out here in two turns, which is always nice. Maybe I have missed some stuff over here. I will endeavor to explore more. I'll pop a farm down here too. May as well do a little bit of exploration. Now my builder is in position over here in Salaka. That's a really good banana tile. And we'll just go ahead and start improving some of these mines. There is apprenticeship. Uh, apprenticeship is very important to pick up, especially if you have a lot of mines in your empire, because it gives you plus one production to mine improvements. It's always good to pick this up if you have a well-developed empire. And at this point in the game, I have a well-developed empire with a lot of production, a lot of mines. So that's going to represent a huge production increase in a lot of these cities. And it'll also give you access to the industrial zone. It's worth it to throw down a couple of industrial zones to kind of spread power out in the late game and stuff like that. Uh, I could make my way towards these things. But again, I want to make my way towards the cartography. Okay, so I built a monument in here. Let's go ahead and get the granary. And over here we got our second galley. Send this one out as well. And, uh, hmm. Have a look at tires, tiles. It looks like I could use a builder to improve some of this stuff. So we'll go ahead and slap a builder down there. I believe I am one turn away from the critical moment of attack. Now these coursers are medieval units, so they are still boosted by the great generals because they give the classical and medieval area units, so that's always nice. This builder will chop right there, and then I will place the commercial hub again because I, wa I want more gold. Uh, gold is what fuels my army, so that, that is an important thing to pick up. And you'll go there to improve that. Now we have a nice farm triangle in here to feed this city. Go ahead and lock in those farms. This is a good spread of tiles to work in this city. Excellent. It's a very, very productive and very, very good at growing city. I'm quite happy with it right now. I'll just go ahead and get these last two farms up. Let's make sure we're working these to keep the city well fed. And... I think it would be worth it to trade with Hong Kong. If I was going to do that, I would like to swap out my government. But if I trade with Hong Kong, I can get suzerainty of them. I am going to trade with Hattusa for the extra gold. Gold is really, really important to me at this point in the game because, again, the more gold I have, the more I can upgrade my army. We'll put a mine down here. Now, this is a 2-3 production tile, so it's very, very productive, which is very, very nice. Um, could have made the argument that I should have done something there, but maybe a farm triangle in here would be quite good to help feed the city, although a farm triangle here would maybe be better. Let's do a quick bit of coastal exploration. We'll head through there. And we got another warrior. I'm not sure. Did I build this warrior? Did I opt? I did because I wanted to make musketmen. That's right. And we get a great merchant. Who we can send to pick up a luxury that we do not have access to. I will send them up to probably grab this amber since I don't have a source of amber in my empire. We got ourselves a market in the capital, which means we can build another uh, thingadoodle. You know the words I'm looking for. You know the one I'm talking about, the trade route. Yes, I will grab a trade route because that'll represent more gold that I can use. Now my friendship with the Ottomans ends this turn, as in at the end of this turn. I've got a warrior in here. Uh, Watermill wouldn't really do much for me. The best thing to do with this city is to maybe look for some sort of empire-wide infrastructure that we could do. Now we could opt to improve this sort of stuff over here. Drop a farm down here, chop these things out. Um... I think what we're going to opt to do is start building up a diverse army. Uh, let's see. So yes, I would like to put a mine right over here. That'll make that into a 2-3 tile. Uh, 
And we put a farm down here to make a nice farm triangle, which will help this city continue to grow to its maximum potential. The last little bit of exploration over here. So I think we've discovered everything to be uh, discovered about this continent. I'm going to send you back to be upgraded into a caravel. You're coming around the edge. Very good. Again, these guys are just chilling. Don't need to send them anywhere just yet. An There's buttresses. We may build some dams. Uh, I could talk about where and when you want to build dams. I was going to build an aqueduct, but I never did. Did I? Ah, I picked one up from Tyre, so I don't need to build an aqueduct, never mind. I was going to build one over here in Salaka, but I guess I accidentally made the right decision process. Alright, let's go ahead and pick up markets in here. And get to work on this commercial hub. Then we will chop that. Then I want to head up to here to chop these two. Remember, these are hills, so I can chop them and place mines on them. So I get the benefit of having a really good tile and the production from chopping. Let's go ahead and declare the war now. Again, we're going to just declare a surprise war. And bring our units up into the fight. Preferably getting our Corsairs up. And there we go. Already dead. And then we can go start killing some of his units. At the same time, so Adana is dead, it's time to grab Victor, reassign Victor to the new city. Click on the Keep City button, so now we have a city that we can operate out of to upgrade our units and go ahead and take on Bursa. And then finally, Istanbul. This city had no real buildings built, so we'll just tell it to go ahead and get to work on a granary. And that city will be improved over time. Got three farms in here. Looks like, uh, in terms of tile improvements, it might be worth it to keep these as banana tiles. They're pretty good. This city would be actually be quite good at generating gold and citizens. So it might be worth it to keep these guys as banana tiles. Uh, you know what would be a good move? Is to improve this uh, chocolate tile. Take a moment to heal. You're going to come back this way. And you're heading up to be ready on the coastline to go and explore the great world and find me someone to kill. Four turns away from cartography, so I think we want to end any construction of boats that will take longer than that. Since uh, when you research a technology while a unit is still in production... All that glisters is not gold. do this and look to take on this horseman positioning here isn't super important because I'm just overwhelmingly powerful compared to him I want to attack with the strongest unit first even if it is across the river because the strongest unit will do the most damage and lower the city's health the most and then we have Bursa we will keep the city and just go ahead and see if we can pick up stuff like granaries we don't need to do anything really in particular at this point we're snowballing way out of control I got a couple of extra warriors to send off and uh Uh, let's see here. What do we want to do? All this stuff is locked in, that's fine. I'm having a hard time thinking of something to do with this city other than building units. I guess I could get a couple of builders to uh, improve some of these other cities. And we're going to appoint Pingala now to place uh, Pingala in the capital because this is our biggest city, so it's where we can generate the most resources. Uh, where do we have a whole lot of chopping to be done? I think I will be doing a significant amount of chopping in Salaka, so I'll, I'll go ahead and assign Magnus over to there. Because I want to chop out these things. These two, uh, I want to put in farms basically in this area, so that Isik and Salaka can share a farming area, uh, so that they can grow more rapidly. I'll probably give this as three farms to Salaka, and this as two farms to Isik. Okay. 
And uh, I'm being a little bit inefficient here in terms of like placing my generals and stuff like that because, you know, I'm just like so kind of ridiculously far ahead that it's not really that important. <laughs> uh, we'll go ahead and chop there. That'll get the commercial hub going a little bit quicker. We'll pop up here and you'll go ahead and improve that as well. Three turns away from getting our caravels. We do want to have a little bit of gold saved up if at all possible. Another mine in this city will upgrade its productivity, which means it gets more stuff more quickly. I will fortify you. It could be worth it to fortify some of the units in, say, say you have a pack of units, so just leave one of them unfortified so you get a reminder to remove to move one of them. So you know, oh yeah, there's a group of units over here. Part of, part of playing the game is honestly about managing yourself. And uh, let's go ahead and trade with Hong Kong. I was hoping to plug in the double envoy card, but I don't think it's that important. Like we could take suzerainty of Hong Kong if we wanted to. Uh, with that, but it is not such a big deal. Right. This city is well and truly grown. So let's go ahead and make sure we de-emphasize food and prioritize production. So that any tiles with food and production uh, are looked after. This looks like a pretty good spread of things. Oh man, I could do even more farms. But I think what we'll be doing is putting in some lumber mills into this city. I may even harvest the deer here. Because I believe uh, if you have a deer... Uh, woods tile i think it's actually better to put a lumber mill than a camp there unless you're going for something that really synergizes off of camps like temple of artemis for example but this will probably be a whole bunch of lumber mills in here we could put an industrial zone this would eventually get plus two adjacency excuse me i've got the, i've got the hiccups <laughs> um yeah let's see what else could we build in here that would be of significant importance to my empire's growth well entertainment complex would not be terrible to pick up either at some point and i think equally valid is to place it here uh, amenities are important to build when you're in a war game uh, in the mid late game to make sure that you can essentially keep, keep your people happy uh, from all the war and stuff that's going on and the huge population cities that you're growing uh, now where does this builder want to go i'm probably going to send this one up to help build up these newest cities Go ahead and use these horsemen to take on this spearman. Would be a fairly easy and straightforward kill. Keep exploring. Let's see. I think I was going to build an industrial zone in here, wasn't I? Yes, because there is quite a good industrial zone here from the adjacent mines and quarries and stuff like that. We'll pop that in there. That'll give the city a little bit of extra production. It'll also provide power and production to my late game cities if we so desire. Uh, if we were in a bigger game, we might do that. We're going to chop this. That'll finish the commercial hub a little bit quicker. And we'll go ahead and put down this. This is going to be... Uh, sometimes I will actually place plantations. Normally I would recommend chopping these, um, but these are not hill tiles, uh, as far as I can tell they only have one production so it's worth it to put a plantation on here in order to get the extra gold because the city is already generating a bunch of gold and doesn't really have a whole lot of production potential so i'm seeing it as kind of a place to just generate gold that i can transport to other areas of my empire Alrighty. Go ahead and head over here, pop you into that city, and we will go ahead and grab this for faith. Now I have uh, a little bit of faith that I could spend on things. For example, over here, I could choose to purchase a monument, which would get the borders growing in here, make the city a little bit better. Not much else I can do with my faith, so, you know, may as well. I'll grab the market in here again for gold and trade routes that we can use to get more gold, which we can use to upgrade our army, which we can use to kill our enemies. Sort of every every decision is logically following this train of thought of murder that we just want to destroy everyone who is in the game. <laughs> uh, actually, too bad I cannot place a harbor here. I would have totally placed one. Uh, this city has now some basic stuff. Let's go ahead and work on a district of some kind, perhaps. Uh, let's see. 
Well, there's not really much place to actually place a district in here right now, so we want to wait for the borders to grow. I don't want to spend my money to force the borders to grow. If I didn't, if I didn't have an army to pay for, I would definitely use my gold in that way. Ooh, I would love to kill that trader. Let's see if we can get a good surround on this city. Make sure our great generals are at least in range to provide support to some of these units. And start hitting the city. And it'll be dead here next turn. Place a mine right there. Let's have a look. What is our surplus food? Food surplus is pretty good. So we're not in any rush to do anything in here. These tiles are feeding these low food tiles over here, which is exactly why we have these. Uh, we have these high food tiles to feed these low food tiles. That is the way you should think. You should, uh, it's sort of like uh, if, if any of you guys watch Biffa, uh, who does uh, City Skylines Fix It, he does like this lane mathematics thing, right? Where, you know, if you have two lane, if you have three lanes going into a four lane, you want to have, uh, you want to like have a two lane and a one lane go into a three lane highway, right? Similarly, we might have... Uh, high food tiles to correspond with low food tiles. So for every low food tile, we want to have a food. So basically, if you consider across a city, you want to have on average for each tile, at least two food, right? Because that keeps the city sustained because each citizen takes two food to sustain. So you want to have at least two food per tile. So similarly, we might consider that this tile has one food, this tile has three food. These tiles cancel each other out. This tile has three food, this tile has two, one food. These tiles cancel each other out. This tile has one food, this tile has three food. These tiles cancel each other out, right? And that sort of logic can get you really far. And then you can see when the city grows again, it will grow to this mine right here, which only has one food, which um, is fine because then the city will be at its growth limit. So we don't need to do tile mathematics at that point because food loses basically all of its value once you are one population away from your growth limit. Okay, hopefully that is helpful. And there's a, lot, there's a lot of stuff going under the hood in my brain here as I go. And I'm, I'm trying to bring it to the surface for you guys. And it, it could be a lot. It can be an awful lot of work to do so. Now, do I want to chop here or do I want to keep? I'll actually be doing chopping once Magnus is established. We're just going to hang out and wait. Now, okay, so we are in position to upgrade into cartography. We want to get at least two caravels if we can. Um, they are quite expensive. Well, that'll be a bit of a challenge. Um, in the case of these guys, we'll send this one out exploring. And uh, I was hoping to get at least two caravels, but I don't quite have enough money. Getting at least one caravel, though, should be good enough to start uh, sending our units out. And similarly, we're going to grab all of these horse units once we've conquered this. Let's go ahead and pillage that for a little bit of gold. And then take this city out. There goes the Ottomans. Yet more era score. By the way, I just want to point out, I only needed 51 era score for this era, and I have 113. <laughs> Perhaps a little bit overkill. Maybe if you were trying to optimize, you would have waited the two turns for the era to end, then kill these guys for era score. You can do that sort of stuff. I'm just going to... I'm not even going to heal up on these guys. I'm just going to immediately send them uh, to cross the water. Because we just need to get out there and find who it is we need to kill. Just need to find the... First place that I can jump into the water. So now that we can jump into the water, we want to look for something like this. Square rigging, which is going to give me plus one movement for embarked units, which means my embarked units can move a little bit quicker to the objective. We completed the granary over here in Komstrakaya. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves a harbor. Since we don't need to build any ships or anything like that, we're just going to build the harbor to make it our life a little bit easier. More trade routes, all that sort of jazz. We'll send our scouts out. We'll hang you out right there. Um, it might actually be a better idea to pick up Niter first, because then I can actually build the things, and then I can take a moment to queue up a couple of quadriremes in here. And maybe I could also get one in here. Um, I would need a builder over there to chop it out to get it in a reasonable amount of time. Just building granaries and stuff like that, nothing. Uh, the, the decisions at this point aren't super duper important. Uh, I think actually a pasture right here would make this into a good tile because 
uh, it might give me the extra housing we if we do some housing counting uh, uh, 0.1 or 0 0.51 1.52 2.5 so then I would just need one more housing tile in here uh, like half housing tile and then I would get the thing and there is a wine right there that I could if I didn't have an army to pay for I could buy that tile right uh, let's go ahead and get our scouts into the water who have been patiently waiting for this day And another one of these. The city is now producing nine gold per turn, which is a very healthy amount. I think I will put a lumber mill over here um, once I get this next builder. I do recommend prioritizing production tiles over anything else when you're when you're improving your empire. But in certain cases, it can be totally fine to just, you know, at this point, like, really, I'm like super far ahead. So it's not super important to optimize. You can prioritize optimization, but I find that that sort of like attention to detail gets very exhausting. And so part of, again, part of playing the game is actually managing yourself and, and trying to make sure that you get through the game, right? That that you are not only enjoying yourself, but you're you're actually achieving your goals. So we're going to go ahead and improve this fishing tile and we'll go ahead and grab ourselves a great admiral. We can also use these guys to, guys to scout because they can't die. They're essentially immortal. Um, might be a good idea to get amenities in here. Have a look around. I could, for example, build a terracotta army, which would give me, you know, stuff on all my guys. I could build the pyramids. Um, but I think the best thing to do... would be to get a builder to improve these two tiles. So we shall do that. And over here... we have completed the harbour. Or not the harbour, sorry, the commercial hub. Which is... We wanted to get a harbor next, but we can't quite do that yet. Um, so the, f the best tile to jump off the continent is actually all the way up here, which is quite obnoxious. If only I had a road that went all the way to make my life easier, but we will be trying to run off the continent. Uh, the reason I have to go off the continent up here is because there's cliffs all the way along here. And you can't, uh, you can't go into the water off a cliff uh, unless there is a city providing a jumping off point. And let's go. Cheeto. Dust. It's like fairy dust for gamers. Right. Uh, no, well, actually, I'm going to keep that for you. Yes, that's a reasonable thing to do, actually. Now that I have reassessed the situation, you may keep that sheep. You may keep the sheep. Sheep to keep? Keep the sheep. And so, important thing here you're going to see is that this guy has five moves. This guy has four. This guy has a vision range of uh, two. This guy has a vision range of three. So caravels are just quite a bit better at exploring than galleys. Um, but galleys can kind of do the job in a pinch. Obviously in an ideal world. I believe... So yeah, because galleys aren't really much better than just like an embarked unit um, for exploration. You're just hanging out. Waiting until I have enough Nidor to turn you into a Musketman and stuff like that. But see, I don't really have enough information to make my next strategic move, so I'm kind of bouncing around the tech tree to buy time to find my next move. Um, if that makes sense. Okay, we have a Golden Age, and we have quite a few choices that we could go for here. I think commercial hubs and harbor districts provide extra science is a really interesting bonus, because it means I could get to some pretty high technology, and I have a lot of commercial hubs in a couple of harbors. Um, the other one is Monumentality. This would be very, very appealing to me. If there was some culture stuff that I wanted to unlock, Pen, Brush and Voice would be really good. And if I was doing any sort of um, religious stuff, I would go for this. But I think in this instance, uh, Free Inquiry, Science is the main thing you want to go for when you're going for any sort of domination victory. And uh, yeah, let's get these farms going. I will just slowly build a watermill in here. To improve the city's production capacity. Uh huh. Okay. That is an interesting predicament to find myself in. Go ahead and repair that tile right there. Very nice. And you have two build charges. I'm going to go ahead and send you around here to improve that tile right there. Uh, old Magnus has established himself, so we can do extra efficient chops with uh, him in place. 
Our goal is exploration. We want to efficiently explore, if at all possible, by spreading these units out to find the most amount of enemy or uh, the most amount of land in general. Or not land, but vision, right? Of course, there's a quadririum there ready to kill my goddamn scout. This is typical. Uh, normal stuff for civilization. It's like, oh, I found this incredibly... I found the one unit on the map that can cause me a problem. And there he is. <laughs> oh, that's not a scout. That's a galley. Sorry. Apparently, I can vote in the World Congress, and I'm the only person here. So... City center buildings? I will vote that up once, and then I will vote for myself twice. You typically only need to vote one or two times. Don't worry about it too hard. Unless there's one that you really, 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 really need, don't worry about it too much. Looks like these guys also voted for unmet player, unmet player, so I voted for myself twice, and that means I win the vote. And then similarly, I threw a couple votes into uh, city center just to make sure that one wins. More science intervenes in warfare. Okay, so now I have armory and nighter, which is going to give me something to do in my capital. I'll go ahead and open up the queue here and queue up that armory. There is actually Nitre. So uh, now that we have unlocked a new strategic resource, we do the thing again. We type in Nitre. We hit the button. We hit the search button. And now we can find... There's also going to be a pop-up here that'll show me where I've already discovered sources of Nitre. Uh, so let's go ahead and get ourselves a builder in here. Nitre here, Nitre here. So it looks like I have access to an awful lot of Nitre, which makes me very happy. There's even some of my capital. I'll be able to make good use of that towards uh, my goals. It looks like I have plenty of nitre to uh, do what we need to do. We'll get this one online fairly quickly. I think it could also be justified to purchase a builder or redirect a builder to here as fast as possible with all urgency to get that nitre online. And now that we have nitre, it might be good to pick up things like frigates. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get musketmen first because this represents a rather large combat boost, right? Uh, Corsairs are 44, um, musketmen are 55. Uh, did I ever... Okay, I need to unlock ironworking first before I go to for infantry upgrades. And I got another great scientist. Not that it's super important. Just like, don't really pay attention to that. It, it wasn't a very good one. That's why I didn't talk about it uh, over here. Place the harbor. You could use a builder. I could also use a trader, which I will get this city to uh, grab me that trader. Get me that market because I want lots of gold to pay for my army. We completed the market over here. We could get another district. I'm not seeing one that really jumps out to me. I think the these two are totally fine to have. Uh, the only thing I can think of maybe grabbing is more builders to improve these tiles. And uh, I do want to farm here. Yes, sir. So now I also want to make sure that I build a Saka Horse Archer. Do the builder than the Saka Horse Archer so that I get the error score. And I also want to build a Kurgan so I get the error score. I'm going to put a farm right there. That'll give Isik a really good food tile. It'll grow naturally. I don't need the force to grow up by working that. More that that gives housing uh, more than anything else. That's important. The city has basically all the tiles it'll ever need, at least for the foreseeable future. But maybe we're better off spending our production here. For example, I could chop this out and then put a mine there to make that into a better tile. All right, let's get this kill. Let's get as many of these kills as possible. As we make our way to the uh, place that we jump off the continent. We must be getting close to the uh, enemy islands. We've improved that tile. Let's go get that crabs online. Really great thing about fishing boats tiles is they give you lots of gold. So if you're going for any kind of domination victory, you are going to want to improve your uh, coastal resources because they give you a lot of gold to uh, build your army with. Hey, there's Nan Madal. We haven't quite found the circumnavigable world, but uh, we might want to make friends with Nan Madal. Uh, more importantly, just to have a place that we can operate out of. This is actually probably the worst place to jump off to go to the other continent, um, which really sucks. 
Because I kind of gambled in which direction to go. The Lord made us all. The day we stop exploring. There's exploration. We will be taking the exploration government type because it is a raw improvement. It is a overall improvement. We're going to keep... We're going to take out raid. We are going to keep professional army because we are still doing upgrades. And we're going to go ahead and plug in press gang so we can start building maybe more naval units if we need them. Actually, I'm going to keep that out for now. Um, let's see. What could we plug in here? Merchant Confederation is really nice for lots of gold. And plus two gold from trade routes is really nice as well. Then perhaps uh, conscription is always nice to have. Let's have a look here. Autocratic Legacy is pretty valuable just for the short term, so I'll plug that in. I want you to get that kill so you heal up. Of course, there's a barb camp up here that I need to deal with. I may as well deal with it while I'm in the area. And uh, I'd love to get to work on square rigging, but I'm going to work towards gunpowder. I don't have any quadriremes ready to upgrade into frigates, and I don't have enough nitre either. Go ahead and make our way towards mercantilism uh, for a few reasons. First of all, better triangular trade, and uh, logistics is good, as well as getting more nitre to be able to upgrade our army. The stuff on the way, like a lot of the stuff down here isn't super important. Like I don't need these. Like I mean, I guess I could use the envoy. Like I mean, it's only two turns to get an envoy. I mean, civil service is pretty cool. Naval tradition is pretty cool. All these things are like, you know, pretty nice. But you kind of want to, at this point in the game, you want to you wanna aim for like really important stuff. Mercantilism is an important one because it gives uh, logistics, triangular trade, which is an upgrade to our current card. You could make an argument for going straight for nationalism, right? Uh, because this allows me to combine my units together. But I'm going to prioritize mercantilism. And now that I'm actually getting close to um, nationalism, I'm going to start building more horse units. This might seem a bit weird, but I'm going to start building more horse units to combine with the currently existing horse units, right? And uh, any of the other units that exist in my empire too. Okay, so uh, let us do... I may as well repair that holy site. I mean, it exists, right? It gives the city something to do. And right now, at this point in the game, all I'm doing is really looking for things to keep my cities busy um, for reasonable amounts of time. This is going to give me a trade route, so I will work on that. That'll slowly help me. And you'll head up there. That way. You're heading up this way. And there is Norway, of all people. And it is with a coastal city, of all things. That is really great news, because it means we'll be able to get a foothold, and it's actually not too far for our army, which is in position up here. Finally, lots of city-states too, which is very cool. Go ahead and turn you guys into swordsmen. I had completely forgotten to move you over here, but we'll slowly get you over there. I want to have these guys pre-prepared, pre-turned into swordsmen, so they can be upgraded again later. And lumber mill there, okay. You'll be getting upgraded as well. In fact, I could make the argument that it would be good now to pick up machinery to get crossbowmen upgrades and the um, skirmisher upgrades. And I would like to maybe convert one of these guys to be my thingy. Be suzerain of them so that I can use their territory to upgrade my units. That's another little trick you can do when you're invading a continent. A bunch of swordsmen will make my army look very robust. Looks like Norway, at the least, is in the north of the continent. Not sure where the sixth civilization in this game is. We shall have to find them. And there's a little bit of a little bit of annoyance going on up here. I won't waste too much time attacking this thing. It's more important that I get into the water. Grab that. Now this guy, if I remember correctly, increases my trade route capacity and means that foreign trade routes to the city provide gold. So the extra trade route is always nice and welcome. Let's keep doing local infrastructure. And you hang on there. You are now strong enough to be moved across the ocean. 
I'm confident in using swordsmen, not warriors, because they're horrendously out of date, but swordsmen are very, very usable. And uh, we may as well grab some more traders. At this point, the most important resource for my empire is actually gold, of all things. Uh, the more gold I can get, the better. If I can increase my gold income, I will be able to sustain a much stronger and bigger army. We will lumber mill that right there. The city will be producing military for me to send on the follow-up wave. Do you worry about that? I think these archers are worth sending now as well. Since I have uh, the whole point of find the whole point of why I'm excited to find Stav and Stavanger is that I now have a place where I can get an easy foothold. I can get onto this continent with relative ease. Have a look. You have quite a few cities, and Stavanger is a coastal one that I can easily take with my caravel. Let us run away from quadriremes. Galleys cannot be quadriremes in the open water, one, one by one on one, unless you have some kind of bonus towards barbarian fighting, which we currently do not have. I want to make sure we're working these nice high gold tiles, because gold is actually more important than production at this point. I could if I wanted to. I also set a hotkey here to be able to f uh, switch through cities. I would recommend this hotkey too. Uh, I have a uh, right square bracket and left square bracket set so that I can quickly cycle through cities, tire and back, and I can quickly. So like, let's say I want to go through and say everyone should work gold. I can just tap this hotkey, keep my mouse in position, and then click that button as I go through. In this case, I will not be doing that, but that is just another example of how to play efficiently, right? And not lose your marbles. Um, and another way, another way, uh, place where this is useful, let's say I have a whole bunch of faith, right? And I want to buy all these buildings. I can quickly just look through the list. And if I have a good eye, I can pick out, oh, there's a building I want to build. Ancient walls, ancient walls. I can kind of, you, you develop the skill of being able to spot the thing you want to build really quickly, right? Uh, so a good example of that would be if you are playing Arabia and you um, want to purchase your religious building in your holy sites, you could just quickly flick through your cities and build it uh, with ease. I'm going to refuse any deals with him because I plan to go to war with him. And just to give you a taste of what is to come, and I managed to build the uh, sack of horse archer on the turn that I got machinery, which is pretty exciting. Uh, these guys actually upgrade the field cannon, so I'm pretty sure I can keep building them, but that just gave me a little bit of error score. I'm also going to want to plop down a Kurgan, like right here. But yeah, just to give you a taste of what is to come, let us declare war on Norway to keep you excited for the next episode. So war has been declared, and uh, yeah, that city is dead. <laughs> the city is dead already. Oh, the beauty of being ahead in technology and science. He's currently making 20 science per turn. I'm making 118. I really hope that this illustrates that just, just how easy it is to beat Prince. And uh, if you learn just a few, like, efficiency and, you know, how to guide your, your principles in, in playing the game. Like, you'll notice, for example, that throughout this entire game, I have built, like, basically zero holy sites. I've built basically zero industrial zones, theater squares, and stuff like that. I built a couple of campuses, but for the most part... I focused really, really hard in on commercial hubs, campuses, and the occasional encampment. In reality, really just one. But like, that's not all you need. Once you have a weight, once you have your army, you don't need to build more army. You need to support that army. You need to support it with upgrades. You need to, and, and the way you do that is through getting lots of science, lots of gold, and then eventually, and we're about to hit that eventually, when you start getting stuff like nationalism, which allows you to combine your units together to make them stronger, that's when you want to start making more armies. Because in my personal view, if you need to continuously produce an army to beat the AI, you're messing up because you're already behind by some measure. Um, and you're not going to be able to win properly. But anyway, that, that's just like my theory. I mean, I guess everyone's going to play differently. Everyone's going to have a different skill level. But hopefully this series is teaching you guys some of the skills you need to know in order to win the game efficiently. I love you all very much. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.